So you pick the tile that you really want. You just really looking forward to put it on your floor and enjoy a brand new kitchen floor, bathroom floor, whatever it may be. Did you do this very important thing first? Did you check to see if your floor is even strong enough for the tile you selected? I'm going to tell you all about that right now. Okay, so you want a tile floor on your um, plywood subfloor. Can you just go ahead and install it without thinking about anything else? Just you want the tile floor, so you're just going to put it in? Or maybe not, because there are there are certain standards that have to be met so that you won't have a problem with your with your tile coming loose and falling apart and cracking. And what I'm trying to get at is the um, is a joist structure of your floor and that's why I'm in this basement here because you can see I can see the, the joist over here and what you need to determine is the size of the joist the, uh, the distance between the joists and the unsupported span so what I'm talking about here is these, these joists see these joists here I mean I'm actually not tall enough to reach it so these these are the joists. One, two, three, etc., etc., as you go along. And then the unsupported span is the length that the joist has to go before it reaches a beam or a wall, a supporting wall, or something like that. And so you need to measure the height of the joist, which in this case, let's see what they are. In this case they're two by twelves. They're two inches two by twelve. So that means so you know that's a normal size. So what actually that means is the, the twelve inches is from here to the bottom of the of the subfloor and the width. So that's twelve inches tall and two inches wide. It's a normal size because these are actually um, uh, joist so the actual size is 11 and a half by one and a half and then the distance between them in this case is is 16 on center between each joist between that joist and that joist and that joist and that joist and that joist is 16 inches and the unsupported span is from this wall here where the jo joists are sitting on to this beam here because you got the lolly column so these are the rigid parts and this is the the unsupported span from from that beam to the concrete so we're gonna put those numbers into an app and see what we come up with for the deflection so for porcelain tile and ceramic tile it's L over 360 that's the, the deflection is the amount the amount the floor will bend and for uh, natural stone it's L over 720 but there's another another thing that you have to know about natural stone I'll get to that in a little bit so we're gonna put those numbers in the app and see see what we come up with for for deflection for this floor here if it's uh, 360 L over 360 or more we can install porcelain tile if it's L over three if it's between L over 720 and L over 360 only porcelain tile if it's 720 or more then we can uh, install a natural stone so let's let's figure this out and see see what we got okay so I'm gonna open up my app here where is it right here I'll put a link in the description for this app now I'm gonna now my joists were so uh, here you can see under 360 no good for uh, uh, for tile no no good for stone uh, over 720 okay for stone so let's put in the in the numbers so we know it's a just a, a regular joist and we know the joist height is a 2 by 12 as we figured out so here's an, here's a 2 by 12 
So we'll select that. The joist width is uh, one one and a half. It's just a regular two by twelve, typical uh, two by board. So that's we'll select that. It's already selected. Then we know the um, joist spacing is sixteen inches on center, and we know that the the distance for the unsupported span is or joist length from the wall to that beam is 15 feet so we'll select 15 feet then we'll calculate calculate the flexion so we're at 521 so what that means is that it's good for tile but it's no good for stone because we needed um, 720 for stone L level 720 if we're going to put in a natural stone like marble or or travertine or whatever and there's also another thing that you need, needs to be done if you're installing a natural stone I'll talk about that um, possibly another video for this one here we're just talking about porcelain or ceramic tile so you need to calculate the deflection because if you don't meet now let's say this that they were two by eights because some houses will have a two by eight so this was a uh, a 2 by 12 so let's go a 2 by 8 if that was a 2 by 8 and it was 15 feet, feet that's going to be a real bouncy floor and we calculate that deflection and we're at like that would have been like 216 so that would be you, you wouldn't be able to install neither tile uh, anything you would have to um, restructure or so, or put in a golly column or a beam somewhere now this is something that you would have to consult an engineer for this app will just give you a general guideline on whether you can, uh, if it's the, the floor is stiff enough, whether the deflection is correct for a, for a for porcelain or a natural stone. Uh, but if you don't meet that deflection or if you're borderline, you probably want to make sure that you have the correct deflection. And if you so if your deflection falls below 360 for porcelain tile, ceramic or porcelain tile, then you need to beef up your floor. There's several things you can do to beef up the floor. You can add, you know, you can assist some some joists to the existing uh, joists. That sometimes can be really difficult because there's all kinds of mechanical stuff in a way, but sometimes you can do it. And you don't necessarily go have to go the entire length to beef it up. Um, you can add a lolly column and, uh, and a beam you can, there's, there's a bunch of things you can do. However, I am not an engineer, so I can't give you the specifics of that. You would have to consult with someone that uh, understands and can determine and do the math on uh, how to uh, stiffen up a floor. But this app will tell you whether you, uh, your floor is stiff enough to actually install tile. Just don't go right ahead and just buy a tile buy a thin set, install your tile, and then six months later it's falling apart because the floor is too bouncy. It's not stiff enough to support your tile. Uh, I've seen it happen many, many times. And the, one of the things that I do when I look at a, we'll look at a, um, at a tile floor is the first thing I do is I go into the basement and I look at the joist structure. If you can't uh, see the joist structure because they've got a finished basement usually there's a section of the house uh, where you can you can see what it's like somewhere there's usually some way you can uh, figure out what the joist structure is so that's very important to do before you even buy a tile because you don't want to buy a tile and find out you can't use it so uh, that that's what I wanted to get out in, in this video here so if this is your first time seeing my videos, my name is Sal de Blasi. I'm a tile contractor in the Boston area, North Shore, and I've been installing tile for over 34 years. Uh, my channel has over 700 videos on how to install tile, all kinds of videos about all, uh, you know, all, pretty much all the aspects of tile, wall tile, floor tile, backsplashes, kitchen floors, showers, you name it, it's in there, how to waterproof, schluter systems, uh, um, ladder creek systems even weedy systems there's, there's all kinds uh, I have all kinds of videos explaining all kinds of things all kinds of tutorials so if you're looking for uh, some help on installing tile and uh, I'm probably got somewhere in my uh, 700 videos I have the specifics about that part of the installation or even entire showers I have tutorials on entire showers 
uh, from the studs all the way to the finished uh, product to the grounding. So anyway, uh, as always, leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Patreon. If you can support me there, that'd be great. And I have an online store at dubsonart.com. But most important of all, subscribe. Thanks.